our feet. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Oh, we got so much to praise him for. I got so much to praise him for. I got so much. Hallelujah. We got to have the word to go through. 
Hallelujah. We praise the Lord for her and Mother Jackson, Elder Shockley. Yes. Hallelujah. All those that are in their respective places. Yes. Hallelujah. Right now, we call it for our welcome. The welcome uh, host of hostess is coming with the welcome yes. address today. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord for Sister Pam Jackson. Yes.
invite Captain Pollock, who will be our guest. So we're asking that everyone please come back and give us support from the uh, president of the men's department. is asking all the men to please donate $50 and asking everyone else to please donate $10. So let's come back and let's have a high time in the floor. Then on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. is our evangelistic service, and the minister of the hour is uh, Minister Charlotte Strauss, and asking that you come out and hear a word from the Lord on Wednesday evening. Then on Thursday at 6 p.m. is our choir rehearsal. Uh, on Friday at 7 p.m., uh, the pastor would like to meet with the ministers. So please be here, all the ministers. Please be here at 7 p.m. to meet with the pastor. Then at 8 p.m., we will have a church meeting, and we're asking everyone to please come to the church meeting. This is where you hear the business side of what's going on. We have uh, financial reports. We hear about all the business aspect of the church. Our church is an open book. We're not trying to hide anything, but we give out the information. And this is a venue also where you could ask questions pertaining to some of the things that's going on as far as the business side of the church. So for all the auxiliaries, we give auxiliary uh, reports uh, during the meeting also. So it's imperative that you have your financial sheet. The financial sheets for the month of September are upstairs in the mailboxes. So it's important that you have that so that you can report your amount during the church meeting on Friday evening. Our workers for Sunday, the MC is Dr. Charles Shockley, the motion leader is Sister Ruth Waldron, prayer will be led by Sister Gloria Foster, Script scripture will be read by Anaya Reese, and our reader will be Dr. Brother Carl Crutchfield. So we're asking that those people will be in their places to carry out the services of the Lord. Yes, Lord. We have uh, several announcements for the month of November, but before I go into that, I would like to say that some of us from the uh, Centennial Committee and a few others, we went to the Shelter House Women's Shelter down on Red Road on Friday evening. It was such a rewarding experience to feed the women, the homeless women, and they were so very appreciative of us coming. Uh, they complimented us on the meal that we served because sometimes they said people just bring just anything to feed them. And I said, oh, no, we wouldn't. We wouldn't bring it. If I'm not going to eat it, I'm not going to bring it to you to eat. All right, that's right. And so they really, they said it was like a Sunday meal, and they really enjoyed it. And we enjoyed being there to serve them uh, also. And so we are scheduled to go serve the, the men on November 26th. So I'll talk about that a little later. Uh, our announcements for November. The church is scheduled to go to Springfield, Ohio uh, at 1 p.m. So we need a, a food count, a head count for the food. They, they want to serve us food after service. And so our pastor, which we're going to call now this week to get a head count on how many people plan to uh, stay after service and eat the meal. Then November 10th is Sunday School Rally uh, Sunday. Ask that you bring additional funds for the Sunday School and there be no eating service on November 10th. November 16th is our 2025 calendar meeting. And so the leadership of the church, that's the auxiliary presidents, vice presidents, secretaries, myself and our pastor will be there for that meeting. November 24th is a senior Santa Teresa Asian celebration and it will take place during the morning service. Also November 26th, uh, we are uh, scheduled to go to the men's shelter down on Guest Street. This used to be the drop-in center, but now they've changed the name. It's the Shelter House, and they have 150 men there to, uh, that they serve on a daily basis. And so we're going to ask if some of the men will go with us yes. uh, to uh, help serve the men. Also, uh, if anyone wants to come down to the church and help or help clean up after we cook the food, then please let us know and uh, we will get everything together and go and serve the men like we did the women. Uh, also, we had thoughts about going back to the women's shelter as well because the lady that cooks the food for them said that they probably would not uh, have a Thanksgiving dinner. So, uh, but I'll give you information about that later. Um, our 100th church anniversary.
surgery is going to take place, and we have a, a, a flyer for it, and it gives you um, on Thursday, the, uh, God's Way will be here Friday, House of Prayer Saturday, Powerhouse, uh, Church of God from Springfield, and then on Sunday, our executive board will be here. Our theme is 100 years and still standing, Matthew 16, chapter 16, <coughs> verse 18. Also, uh, after the service on Sunday, at 3 p.m., we will have a celebration dinner that will take place at the Forest Park Senior <coughs> Center uh, for adults. The age is $10, and for children, it's $10. So we're asking that you go online and purchase your ticket, or you can just put the money in the envelope and mark dinner on it. But uh, the application online is open at this time for you to purchase your dinner tickets. Also, if you want to put an ad in our uh, anniversary booklet, there's a form that you can uh, fill out, and the, the, the ads are $25 and $45, and $50. So I, I will be in the gathering hall after service. If you did not get a copy of this uh, on Wednesday, then I will be in the uh, gathering hall on after service passing these out so that everyone can have it in their hands. Mm -hmm. Also, when we go to uh, Springfield, I will be driving the large van. So if you're planning on going on the van, it's imperative that you let me know uh, that you're going to ride with me. The van will leave the church parking lot at 11.30, promptly at 11.30 a.m. That's all right. First, I've only left one person. <laughs> And she lives right around the corner. But she wasn't here at the time that uh, we said we was leaving, so she got left. She called. I was on the expressway by then. But uh, if you're going to ride the van, please be here and uh, be here on time. So also, I want to go back to our 100th anniversary. Elder Hollis was here, and he heard me announce about our 100 years. And he said, I'm part of your family. So I want to pay my one hundred dollars. So before he left, I'm oh, paying his one hundred dollars. And uh, last but not least, I have a letter here. It's from uh, Matthew Twenty Five Ministries. It says, "Dear Pastor Price, thank you for your support to Matthew Twenty Five Ministries. Your recent gift of five hundred dollars." on October 11th will bring help and hope to those recovering from Hurricane Helena and the severe flooding in North Carolina. Thank you again for your generous support and for helping us care for those who need
Yeah.
My son came to my house to fix a water spigot in the back. And he left it kind of open. And you know up in the trees, they're bats. Did you know there's bats up in the trees? And they look for an opening. And me and my daughter, Christian was about three or four years old, a little bit thing. We went to the basement. So we were going to clean the basement. She went down first, and then Christian went down, and I went down. And I was talking and moving stuff. And all of a sudden, she took off running. She ran up the steps. Did she get her baby? No. <laughs> Did I see what was wrong? No. All I knew is she ran up the steps. So I looked around and I said, okay, I don't know what's going on, but I grabbed the baby and I ran up the steps. Closed the door and I said, what's wrong? She said, did you see that bag hanging down there? Because they come into the least little crack that they can see. And they came in, so I called my son back and take care of this. But she saved herself. My Lord. Come on. She saved herself. She got it. I guess she figured, well, mama will get the baby. <laughs> but I thank God I didn't even see it. I thank God I didn't even see it. If my house is on fire, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get out. You're trying to save you now. You're trying to tell everybody else, come on. Let's go. It's time to get out. But you say yourself. But today we got an untoward generation. Untoward generation refers to a generation that is crooked, perverse, and wayward. Do you know anybody? Crooked, perverse, and wayward. The phrase, the phrase is usually described a generation that is under God's judgment with warped minds and morals. In the Bible, Peter preached that people should be saved from this generation through repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. He believed that the world was doomed to sin, but individuals could still be saved. Hallelujah! The word untoward means difficult to guide, uh -huh. difficult to manage, yes. and difficult to work with. Come on, come on. Untoward generation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know that there are seven types of generations of people. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Yes. The greatest generation, and they're starting with 1901 to 1927. Mm -hmm. These folks were greatly impacted by the Great Depression, which molded their children in regards to thriftiness. This group was also representative of the majority of soldiers in World War II. Then there's a silent generation. They're born 1928 to 1945. Those born between these years are actually the smallest group due to consequences from the Great Depression and World War II. Between the size of the population and the hesitancy to speak out against social issues due to the McCarthy era of government, they earned their name. And then there's a baby boomer. That's what I am. The baby boomer generation, born 1946 to 1964. The baby boomers are actually one of the most relevant groups in modern society as they are integral and present for many of the technology advances in the last 50 years. They have been more adaptable to modern growth and learning how to function in today's technological age. Generation X, born 1965 to 1980. As with baby boomers, Generation Xers are the most relevant generation of modern times in relation to technology and serve almost as a bridge from older populations to younger ones. <coughs> they are present for the inception of the internet, video games, artificial intelligence, and is the population that has credited many of these advances. 
millennials for 1981 to 1996. As mentioned alongside with Gen Xers, millennials are greatly misunderstood and often mislabeled. Older folks can tend to blame some younger for being a millennial when they don't understand the values of older times and hold the same values as they did when they were young. Generation Z. Some of these I didn't know about. Generation Z. My Lord. Born 1996 to 2012. Shame. This group of younger people <laughs> is an interesting one. <laughs> they have been exposed to social media yes. and one of the first populations to cope with cyberbullying mm -hmm. and other internet related issues. Mm -hmm. It was also during this time that school related violence and climate crisis have become more prevalent. Mm -hmm. Gen Alpha, this is the last one, born 2013 to 2025. These are the youngest people in the United States and are the first group to be born in the 21st century. They are the first generation to be born to parents who grew up with the internet, cell phones, tablets, and social media. They are also inclined to be the most radically diverse and most technologically adept. Generations. Come on. Generations. Well, through it all, save yourself. There you go. Save yourself. Yes. No matter what generation you are in, the Bible speaks regarding saving yourself. Mm -hmm. Your generation might not believe. Your generation may say, there's a cosmos God out there. There was even a time they took rocks. They took rocks, y'all. People were buying rocks. Come on, come on. Buying rocks and serving them. You got to save yourself. Your generation might not believe, but you look at them and say, I know a God who sits high. That you are doing. Yeah. Your generation, generation might be an untoward one, might be perverse. Might, you know, there was a time they even had orgies and all this foolishness going on, and they had it going on in the house, in the house of God. Lord. You better save yourself. Yeah. Whatever generation you're in, save yourself. Yeah. There was 120 people that went to the upper room. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to note, some theologians say it's a symbol of a divine waiting period. Mm -hmm. This idea is taken from Genesis 6, mm -hmm. where God talks about the wickedness in the world. Yeah. Genesis 6 and 3 states, my spirit, mm -hmm. God's talking about his spirit, yeah. shall not always abide in man forever, mm -hmm. for he is flesh. His days shall be a hundred and twenty years. The Lord looked down and he said, what in the world are they doing? Come on, come on. This was in Noah's time. What are they doing? Come on. Everywhere he looked, it was sin. Everywhere he looked. And he said he grieved him that he had made man. So he told Noah, he said, build me an ark. Built me an ark. Come on. Noah did exactly what God said to him. If he had a went different than what God said to him, he would have been disobedient. Yeah. Do you know we just got to obey? Yeah. Sometimes people say, well, I don't see it that way. Mm -hmm. He didn't ask you what you thought. <laughs> he didn't ask you before he wrote it. He wrote it and he told you to obey. A hundred and twenty in the upper room are associated with a hundred and twenty priests who were with Solomon when he brought the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. The Ark of the Covenant symbolizes God's presence in the Second Chronicles five and twelve. A hundred and twenty priests are dedicated to perform the rituals of the temple. These hundred and twenty people obeyed. God said. If I don't go away, the Comforter, Jesus said, I got to go away. So the Comforter could come. The Bible says Jesus was sent up to heaven. And he told his disciples before he ascended, go to Jerusalem. Not go downtown. No, no, no. Glory to God. Not go to the mall. 
was a promise. Because yeah. it is a promise. Yeah. The Pentecost, that day after 50 days after Jesus' resurrection. Uh -huh. Did you know Pentecost is happening today? Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. People are getting in tune with the Spirit. People are telling, telling themselves, okay, it's time to let go of everything else. I got to get from Jesus. <laughs> I got to get my mind. Yeah. I got to pull me in. Yes. I got to pull me in. Uh, and I got to hear from Jesus. Yes. The only way to hear from Jesus is I got to let Julie go. Yes. I got to tell Julie it ain't about you.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, yes. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. 